Welcome! In this video I will help you show that if a matrix commutes with all gamma matrices gamma mu, then it is proportional to the unit matrix. Now this is going to be very important as we move forward in the lectures and actually start studying the covariance of the Dirac equation, but that's a matter for another time. For now let's just prove it. So what we will do here is begin by writing out our matrix, let's say M, let's call it M. Now this is just some matrix and we know that M commutes with all of our gamma mu. So if we write the commutator of m and gamma mu, this is zero, okay? And now what we'll do is write this matrix as a linear combination of gamma matrices, right? We know of the large gamma, right? So considering that gamma a, this is going to be uh, the identity, then we have a gamma mu, then we have gamma, uh, actually, I usually write the sigma first, so sigma mu nu, gamma 5, gamma mu, comma, gamma 5. So by gamma a, I'm going to mean those 16, and by gamma small a, I just mean the inverse. So inverse, or rather, let's write it like this. So gamma a downstairs is gamma a inverse. Okay, so m is simply a linear combination of ca and gamma a. If this is strange to you, if any of what I have said so far uh, you don't understand or don't know where it comes from, then you need to go back a few videos in the lectures because everything so far has been uh, proven in other videos. I will link, uh, leave the link in the description uh, to the video where we prove that this is true, for example. Okay, now we know that M can be written as the linear combination, as I said, of other gamma matrices, of, or rather gamma matrices. And now I will do something uh, interesting. So I will just separate this and take one gamma matrix out. So I will leave this sum, but I will take CB, gamma B, and just leave the sum over all others that are not B. Okay? And you will see shortly why I do this. And something important here is that the one that I took out is not the identity matrix. It is not. Because what I will prove very shortly is that CB has to be zero. And that would be the case for all gammas that are not the identity matrix, and we will just kind of rotate them around. That's why we're doing it like this. So now what we will do is multiply with another gamma matrix, but keeping something in mind. So we know from our set of 16 gamma matrices, not including the identity, so I guess only 15 now, we know that all of them commute with some of the others, right? All of our gamma matrices commute with some of the others, not with all of them, but with at least one of them. So what we will do is say, okay, let's choose now gamma D, which is whatever gamma matrix anti-commutes, I, I should have said anti-commutes, I said commute earlier, sorry, I meant anti-commutes. So I will write it like this, this is the anti-commutator, some people use these parentheses, but I don't know, we have been using this so far, but it doesn't matter. So I will take gamma D, which anti-commutes with gamma B. We know that it exists because every single gamma has another one that anti-commutes with them. So whatever gamma B we chose, gamma D is simply the one that anti-commutes with it. Okay, nothing illegal so far. And now we are going to multiply from the left. So maybe like this, so from the left by gamma B, which is the inverse, or sorry, this would be D, so gamma D, and from the right by gamma D. So this leaves us gamma D M gamma D is equal to CB. We can just commute with gamma D because, you know, CB is simply a number. This is gamma D. And then we have gamma B gamma D plus the sum A different than B of CA gamma D gamma A gamma D. Okay, so now what we will do is the following. So notice that M here, we know commutes with the gamma matrices, with the small gammas, right? So what we said about that M, that's uh, the whole point of it, it, it commutes, not anti, regular commutes with the gammas. But all of these are made out of gamma matrices, right? So this one is obvious. These ones are obvious as well. Uh, these ones are also obvious because gamma 5 is gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, and then i or minus i depending on your notation. Um, so, and this sigma mu nu is the commutator between gamma mu, gamma nu with some constants. 
So all of them are simply the gamma matrices. So that means that M commutes with gamma D. So that means that we can simply swap, uh, swap the order around. So we get M gamma D gamma D, which is the identity. So we can just get rid of it. So we get M is equal to, and now we continue. Now we know that gamma B and gamma D anti-commute. So we can reverse the order and put a minus sign. So we get minus CB gamma D gamma D gamma B. So again, these two here are simply the identity and we get minus CB gamma B. Okay. And then we have this thing right there. Now here we have the product of two gamma matrices and then the product of whatever we get times another gamma matrix. Now we know, as we saw in another video, I will also put the link in the description, that the product of any two gamma matrices is another gamma matrix up to a, a factor of plus or minus one or plus or minus i, depending on which ones you chose. So whatever result we get from these two is a matrix times plus or minus one, plus or minus i, and then we multiply that by another gamma matrix. So again, we get another gamma matrix times plus or minus one, plus or minus i. So in the end, we get a different than b, c a times eta, which is again, plus minus one, plus minus i, times you no know, some gamma matrix. Okay, so now let's put down here the initial equation that we had, right? So we started out with this one. So let's just write it down here. So that would be C B gamma B plus the sum A different than B C A gamma A. So what we can do now is multiply both of these equations so now let's multiply both of them by gamma B, the inverse of gamma B. So that when we do that, we are going to end up getting rid of this. And you will see why. So we take, first we multiply by gamma B. So we get M gamma B is equal to minus CB gamma B gamma B plus the sum of A different than B CA. And notice that again, we are just multiplying two random gamma matrices, so we still get just some random gamma matrix, right? So I just wrote it like this because we get just, again, just any gamma matrix. It doesn't really matter which one. And then we have in the second equation, so let's just call this one, two, this is one again and two again. This is M times gamma B. This is CB gamma B gamma B. And this would be uh, plus sum a over b c a eta gamma a right so again we get just some some random gammas okay now what well notice of course these are the identity these are the identity right the it's a matrix times its inverse it's inverse so we get the identity and now we take the trace so now we're going to take the trace of each one of these equations. So let me make some room. So this is one, this is two. So we get the trace of this is equal to the trace of this, the trace. And maybe let's move the plus sign. The trace of that plus the trace of that. So what we get here is the following we get well, in either of them, it doesn't matter. Notice that we have basically the same thing, right? We have basically the same thing. And if both of these terms are equal, then we need trace of minus CB times the identity to be equal to the trace of CB times the identity. Now, of course, the identity, we can just take the minus CB outside, minus CB times the trace of the identity, which is four, right? The trace of the identity is four. So we get that minus 4CB has to be equal to 4CB. So for this to be true, CB has to be equal to zero, right? So that is what we get. So CB has to be equal to zero. So this thing disappears here, it vanishes, that goes to zero. And then the only thing that's going to be left, because now if we have to take the trace of this thing, if we have to take the trace of that, then what we have is the trace of a gamma matrix the trace of a gamma matrix is zero, right? Unless the, the, the gamma that we are taking the trace of, it just happens to be the identity. But the main point here 
is going to be this finding. And what matters here is that we found that the coefficient CB for the matrix that we chose at the beginning has to be zero. Now, what is it that we did? At the beginning, we just chose some matrix to take out, where we said we have the sum, we're going to separate it into these two, and gamma B is not the identity, right? So all that we did is valid as long as gamma B was not the identity. And we ended up finding that gamma B has to be equal to zero. So we could have done the exact same procedure, no, either for gamma mu, for sigma mu nu, for this or for that. And in all of those cases, we would have found that their coefficient had to be zero. So the only coefficient that remains that is not zero is the one that goes with the identity matrix. So that means uh, that M is simply going to be some coefficient, or maybe let's call it small b, times the identity matrix. And that is precisely what we wanted to prove, right? We have shown that if M commutes with the gamma mu's, then it means that we can write it as just some, uh, some constant times the unit matrix, which means right, it's simply going to be proportional to the identity or the unit matrix. Um, so I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe even consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in another video. Thank you very much for watching.